Hello, I'm Jerome Ryan. Welcome to In The Moment Broadcast. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to share this time with you. Today we're going to be talking about end time prophecies and how they are quickly unfolding before your very eyes. I'm going to be talking specifically about a prophecy dealing with locusts on American soil and how you can prepare yourself for what is to come. So I want you to remember that you are in the moment, so stay tuned. Welcome to In The Moment. I'm Jerome Ryan, your host. Thank you for joining in, In The Moment. I'm honored today to have a good friend in studio. Uh, many of you might know him, Apostle Rick Kendall. How are you doing today? I'm some kind of wonderful, my yeah, brother. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Rick, uh, you know, we, we go back many, many years yes, and uh, have shared on many platforms together. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, end time prophecy and a prophecy dealing with locusts on American soil. Mm. And God's response to that, which is talking about Matthew 6, 25 today, the kingdom and mm -hmm. you being a kingdom teacher uh, and kind of share a little about you, Rick, and what you've done over the years. Served oh. on the board of Dr. Miles Monroe and yeah. was involved with that. We both had the privilege of working with Miles. Yeah, so yeah. you want to kind of just share your heart, Rick? And Well, we've been in uh, the Treasure Coast now for 38 years so far and uh, 48 years in ministry and marriage. Congratulations. And uh, been through some stuff like you have. Yes. And uh, seen the good and the bad, <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still excited about uh, the kingdom of God and what God is up to. And uh, so I'm just thankful to be here. We have a network. We have a mentoring school. Um, I just want to be a blessing. And Rick, share a little about the network. Okay. The Global Embassy Network, formerly the Body Network, yeah. uh, has gone into the global uh, arena because uh, we have uh, what we call a network of ambassadors for the kingdom mm -hmm. uh, all over the world who uh, come together relationally through covenant relationships and uh, resource one another, encourage one another. Excellent. And uh, so it's based in Stewart, but it goes all over the world. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I've sat in qu quite a nights so on your Kingdom Teaching yeah. on Tuesday night. That's Do you want to kind of share group, a little yeah. bit about that, Rick? Yeah, the Destiny Group Mentor School was birthed out of just a desire to help people to discover their purpose and destiny because uh, it's as unique as your fingerprint. Yes. And yes. so um, we have a lot of fun uh, through a kingdom perspective helping people to discover that treasure that's on the inside and how unique it is. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, well, great, great, great. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that. I'm one of your contributors, and I, I value your life. <laughs> and I the value same your to ministry, you. And thank you yeah. so very much over the years of partnering and working together. Yes. Uh, what I want to uh, talk about today is end-time prophecy uh, that I recently received um, here in the month of uh, April, May 2020. Um, I saw locusts attacking farmland throughout the U.S., throughout the country. Just recently, back in April of this year, in Ethiopia, you see locust has attacked cropland over 500,000 acres, leaving a million people without food. Mm. And uh, just recently, uh, I sent you a clip last night, it hit the Middle East yesterday. Mm. And when I saw the footage uh, of the locusts in the Middle East, it looked like a cloud. It was so many of them. Mm. And they were just swarming over and over and over and coming toward the traffic. And it, and it was something to see. But I saw, when I saw that on the news yesterday and what I saw in the news in Ethiopia, it is the same thing I saw concerning U.S. Mm. Mm. And, and in seeing that, you know, we talk about when, when there's a locust that take on and, and attack our food source, it also creates um, other hardships in other food chain areas. Mm. And so I think that God is showing us this for a purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just to flaunt uh, one's ability to be able to see, right. but the question is what do we do with what we see? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's uh, why I, I chose to, to, to bring you on today, mm -hmm. brother, to talk about God's response and how we go about preparing yeah. God's people yeah. For what is to come. Wow, that's that's very good. And yes. this scripture uh, that you've chosen for today, 
uh, is kind of the answer to that, right? Yes. Yes. You know, um, I was looking here um, and thinking about the world as a whole, because the world just does not consist of believers. It mm -hmm. consists of non-believers. It consists mm -hmm. of people from all walks of life. And the thought came to mind uh, Dr. Abraham Maslow, who was one of the great scientists and great philosophers. Mm -hmm. um, and he did a study on the human behavior. Mm. And he concluded after doing an evaluation on people from all walks of life that there was nine things that people define as being priority. Mm. It was nine priorities. It was water, food, clothing, housing, protection, security, preservation, self-actualization, and significance. Mm -hmm. And above everything, those things were at the top. Mm -hmm. When Jesus comes along, he says, uh, when, we, when we look at scripture, now Jesus was around long before Maslow. <laughs> <laughs> but Maslow didn't create this. He came up with this result after evaluating people's behavior. Mm -hmm. And so... Jesus says, okay, Matthew 6, 25 says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will do or what will you put on. Is not life more valuable than food and your body more mm -hmm. than clothing? Mm -hmm. Then 26 says, look at the birds of the air for they neither sow nor reap nor gather unto barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not more valuable than they? Mm. You know, and, and so that, 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 that shows God's perspective. Jesus is speaking this. He's saying, you know, we focus on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. But what we've gone wrong is we've made the highest priority the thing, and, yeah. we, and, and, and technically speaking, is to the point where people have now begun to work three jobs to be able to get better housing, mm -hmm. better food, mm -hmm. uh, better protection, yeah. and, 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 and we're going after the things. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus says, hey, hold just a second, calm down, I got this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 33 says, but if we seek first his kingdom yeah. and his righteousness and all these things would be thrown in as a tip. Yeah. Yeah. So we built our faith. We begin mm -hmm. to teach about housing and, and all these things. Mm -hmm. And all these things now have become priority number one yeah. when it should not be priority yeah. number one. Yeah. Our pursuance of God should be number one. Absolutely. And we get earth thrown in. Yeah, yeah. Well, you say a key word there when you say the word seek. Because to me, it's about perspective. The perspective of the things you just mentioned here that people consider essential or what was the word? Um, necessary? Yes, priorities, yes. Is a perspective. Right. But the kingdom perspective is, is different. And perspective is everything. Because as you know, uh, we get our concepts from precepts. Right. And if our precepts are wrong, then our concepts Concept will be wrong, wrong. And then our perspective will be wrong. Yes. So when we look at the word... Now, you, preacher, you need to back up and, and repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. When, when our, we get our concepts from our precepts. Yes. So if our precepts are wrong, then our concepts, concepts will be wrong. wrong. And then our perspective will be off. Yes. And so like right now, with the current situations with locusts and all those things, um, God shared with you in this dream, this vision, that it didn't touch you, if you remember, if I remember right. That was the other vision that I was yeah. sharing about the coronavirus. Yeah. It did not touch me, but you're exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So there's, that is the key. A lot of people would focus on the locus mm -hmm. instead of hearing, it didn't touch me. There you go. So that's perspective. And I sometimes feel like, you know, except in the presence of you, that obviously you're different. But I feel like I, with I'm a lot of people, brother. they are so focused on what they're calling end time events, what they're calling all these things happening, viruses, plagues, or what. And you would almost think by not only in some churches, and I love the church and I love pastors, but I'm saying in some churches, and of course in the news media, you would think the devil's in charge. Right, right. Right now, oh, the devil's, I mean, he's having a heyday. Well, yeah, he is, but it's because he knows his time is short. Right, right. And so, really, the perspective that I see is that the reason all these plagues, issues, corruptions, um, uh, viruses, 
diseases have always been here ever yeah. since Adam fell. But as the kingdom of God comes more into through Jesus, the initial first fruit of many brethren, mm-hmm. and now through us, we're rising up and bringing a whole new government in. It's causing the devil to try to stir up dust. Yes. He's, all these things are taking more prominence because his key is distraction from the fact that that actually, this is the greatest of times. Yes. And this is a time where our light can shine brighter. Church to shine. And, you know, I often wonder in, in some churches where they say, we're more than conquerors until now when there's a virus. Mm-hmm. Well, really? You know, I'm go- I am going to preach. <laughs> but, but really? I mean, why are we more than conquerors until there's a challenge? Right. How about in the midst of the challenge, we af- actually show innovation? Yes, yes. That's my perspective. Right, right. And, 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 and to build upon that, Rick, is when we think about faith and works, mm-hmm. um, even dealing with the virus issue and the epidemic that we see, the other things that are coming along, it is faith and works work side by side. Yeah. When the spaceship go to space, it have boosters that mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. lift it up and get it up to project and yeah. to get the speed and momentum up. Yeah. Then the boosters fall off mm-hmm. and the ship goes on into space. Mm-hmm. Faith and works work the same way. Mm. Works is taking everything the medical science community give us to work with, practice social distancing, wash our hands, and all the things they required us to do, that's works. Mm-hmm. Works has limits, faith doesn't. That's it. So once we have gone as far as we can go on mm-hmm. works, then faith kicks in. We yeah. can abandon now works yeah. once we have gotten to that point. Mm-hmm. Now works takes, I mean, faith takes us into that dimension of God where now God says, okay, coronavirus might have a level 10 impact, but supernaturally I'm gonna reduce it. Mm. And then I bring your spiritual immunity system up to where it need to be. Yeah. Now you can survive and be successful yeah. in that environment because, uh, like you say, the devil has gotten a lot of publicity mm. behind this uh, coronavirus. But at the same time, God's word has always stood and has always conquered any epidemic yeah. that the universe has yeah. ever experienced. Yeah. And so that, 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 that's, that's my perspective in terms of the faith and the works because a lot of people don't know the balance. Yeah. But there's a balance. There's the works. The works is to know what it is you need to do. Yeah. And when you've done all you can do, the works yeah. is just stand. And then don't do those works in fear. There you go. If you pray in fear, you pray fear in. Right. Give, give, me, give me a handshake, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, yes. you know, if the devil knows his time is short and he's the one that's defeated. Yes. Then he must be nervous for a reason. Yes. And so he tries to make it look like, have you ever noticed, he tries to make it look like we're the ones that are nervous and we're the ones that are worried. Yes. And so, you know, I really believe that this is a time where we're going to see the kingdom shine uh, brighter than ever before because uh, we are, if God gave you a purpose before you were born, before you were formed in your mother's womb, Mm -hmm. and he gave me a purpose and an assignment, then guess what? I'm going to fulfill that assignment yes. if I will not be distracted. So, yeah. you know, all the precautions we take, if we're taking them out of fear, uh, that's worse. Right. But if we're t- doing it, as you say, with faith, saying, no, I'm adding my faith right. to this and mm-hmm. wisdom. Well, then I'm telling you, can I look in that camera? I believe God is going to get you into places you never dreamed you could go. Yes. And saying things you never dreamed you could yes. say. Because now he has got his ambassadors poised to give answers the world didn't even know they had questions for. Right. The power of the kingdom gives us the ability to transcend from storm to storm, yeah. storm to storm. This too shall pass. Every storm Jesus showed up in, mm-hmm. he mastered the storm. Yeah. One storm he speaks to. Uh, many he walked on and I believe that today is really a great time for the church because the church has always the kingdom of heaven has always performed its best in a storm not in a calm well and and that's a good point because I don't want to get into doctrine on this show but but because I want to stay on focus with what we're talking about but this whole idea of rapture being we got to get out of here Mm -hmm. I know Jesus is coming back but he's not coming back because God is nervous yes and get down there, son. It's bad. Well, it's been bad for a while, but but he's coming to transition his kingdom through his ambassadors. Yes. So 
we don't need to get out of here now more than ever. Uh, we need to bring the kingdom in. Yes. And to me, I'm more excited about the future than I've ever been. And it's not because I'm stupid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And I'm aware of what's going Amen. on. Amen. Yeah. You know, when I look here at um, verse 27, Matthew six twenty-seven, it says, um, Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your stature? Yeah. You know, 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and neither toil nor spin. Yeah. 29. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. In verse 30, now if God is, so now if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye, a little faith. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I see God giving us his word, and I really think that, it's a wake-up call, really, mm -hmm. for, for believers and to encourage uh, people through this epidemic, yeah. whether it's the locusts, whether it's the um, coronavirus, mm -hmm. all of these things. Uh, back in January 2019, I saw all of these things happening. Mm -hmm. I saw um, the, uh, a major world crisis. It was across the globe. Mm -hmm. But during that time, I saw something even greater. Mm -hmm that hit. So it was in the same window of time. Mm, mm -hmm. And then I saw something dealing with nuclear and whether it's a nuclear bomb or whether it's radiation. Mm -hmm. I saw all of these things happening and those elements manifesting mm -hmm. in the same window. Yeah, yeah. And so just recently the Lord showed me this. And, and so I think that this is the time for us to prepare mm -hmm. and to begin to look at the natural things also mm -hmm. that we can do to respond to and to prepare people mm -hmm. for what is to come. Yeah. Well, again, going back to perspective, you know, if we call the end times, the end times because it's the end or termination, it's the wrong perspective because he said you'll have Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, all these things that you saw. Right. But the end is not yet. Yeah, right. that's but, right. So the end is really, has to happen for corrupted systems. Mm -hmm. But it's not the end for us, it's just the beginning. Right. Of what God has desired to bring his kingdom back into. So, you know, my hope would be, and again, our heart goes out to those who have been infected or affected by the virus, uh, whether it be something really going on or if it's an embellished narrative because a lot of people use these things for their own agendas and it's not flesh and blood but you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's the enemy whatever the case however people have been affected i we're i don't want to sit here like a holier than uh, thou and say why be afraid i mean but we've all initially said what is going on right mm -hmm. but at some point ask god to give you that perspective that you've yes. been talking about. Yes. Seek first the kingdom. Uh, seek first him, and, and you'll get your intel from above and that will really change the perspective. I think it's all coming back to him. Mm -hmm. it, 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 seek first the kingdom. I think with all that's going on, what God is showing us even here in the word is that intimacy, intimacy. Mm. My son, Josh. I love and, your son. And, Josh lived with me for 13 years, mm -hmm. almost 14 years, and then he went on to move back with um, my family and my daughter and son and my ex-wife. Now when I go and pick up all three kids, my relationship with Josh is different than all the other three mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love them dearly. I love them to death. Mm -hmm. But now I spent more time with Josh than I spent with all my other kids mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he lived in the house with me yeah. for 13 and a half mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. The other kids, I pick them up at Christmas time, mm -hmm. summertime, I mm -hmm. visit backwards and forth. When I take all my kids to Walmart or to Best Buy or wherever we go, mm -hmm. Josh goes in with the other three kids. Mm -hmm. My daughter have a tendency to cling to Darren, who's the oldest, and wherever Darren goes, she goes. <laughs> and, 
and she want to know up front, what is the budget? <laughs> so I give them all the budget uh -huh. on what to spend. Uh -huh. But Josh is different. Yeah. Josh has a tendency to go with them and hang out for five minutes. Then he come back to me and hang out for five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Josh go back to them for five minutes mm -hmm. and he come back to me for five minutes. Now Josh would do that all night. But in between going backwards and forward, Josh is saying, hey, daddy, they don't understand. You really about relationship and you like to talk. So Josh be talking and instead of asking for more money. And you know what? I give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you follow me? Sure. Josh gets it. Josh says, no, y'all go ahead on. Y'all are focusing on the $50 budget that he gave y'all. Yeah. yeah. But by the time we get out of Best Buy, get out of Walmart, I'm mm -hmm. going to spend $100 tonight because I'm going to keep hitting them up for $25. And, 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 and so <laughs> I would have given them mm -hmm. an increased budget, too, but they mm -hmm. never asked. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and that's what happens about the kingdom. Yeah. Is God really is concerned about us establishing that mm. daily, 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 yeah, yeah. regular communication. Yeah, Psalms right. 1 says meditating in the law day and night. Yeah. Not sometimes. <laughs> so right. through the constant communication, we mm -hmm. pick up a dynamic in the relationship rim mm -hmm. where God began to see us as real sons and daughters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. And so when it's time for something to manifest where there's a need that need to be met, he's got it because yeah. the communication is there. Yeah, yeah. He's not, they're not coming just for the gift, yeah. but it's coming out of a relationship. Well, this, this goes to your point. An evil and adulterous generation, the scriptures say, seek a sign. Yes. There will be signs, but they're evil and adulterous because they haven't spent time with the Father. Yes. Meaning that they don't know him. So what they do is they look for the sign to say, whoops, I better get it straight right away, right? <laughs> yes. Instead of seeking God, who actually said, it's kind of like a tsunami. If you wait for a tsunami to manifest, it's too late. Right, right. But a tsunami, you need to go deep down into when the plates moved. Yes. To begin to understand how to function. And so, you know, I think him spending time with you and those years with you, he knows the Father's heart. Yes. And so, you know, he he has kind of that advantage to where he's not just looking for some kind of indication out here to say, whoops, I better get my act together because this is going to happen. And God said, no, you'll have one sign given to it. What was the prophet or the Jonah? Jonah. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> In the whale. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think it's so key that we see the importance of building a quality relationship with God. Mm hmm. If we seek first God, if we pursue God with everything, yeah. I believe that everything we need to be efficient and to navigate through whatever is coming will be efficient. Yeah. Well, Rick, I want to say thank you so very much thank for you. joining me yes, and sir. being a part of this broadcast. I, I, I have to get you back. I would love it. Well, you're coming back, my friend. All right. Well, I want to say uh, please write, like, share, and subscribe to In the Moment with Jerome Ryan. And once again, thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. In the meantime, create yourself a wonderful day.